Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecure TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the OWASP SAP. Uh, this is an open source tool by the OWASP, uh, which talks about the, uh, like, you know, which, which gives you uh, the uh, auditor or penetration test ability to uh, do a proxy uh, and, and, like, you know, intercept the request response. It's similar to Burp Suite, which is a very famous tool as well. However, Burp Suite does not offer uh, the active scanning or the automated scanning uh, for free in community edition. While Zap is an open source tool and and you can scan the websites uh, completely like you know uh, for free, and it it comes by default with the Kali Linux. So if you go to the application and then web application analysis, you go in and you can open up the OWASP Zap along with the Burp Suite as well, and also uh, just make sure you have the uh, latest version of Zap installed so you have uh, you can take uh, capability of all the features. Also here you can see the bunch of little add-ons you have, uh, so you can also update the add-ons that you are you using the most. Now, uh, one thing uh, we want to focus on in this uh, episode is uh, demonstrating the scanning mechanism of the and how to triage the issues, how to find the security issues, uh, and like you know how do we gauge whether the issue is correct or not and and validate those issues. So I'm gonna. Uh, focus more on the uh, automated scanning and 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 reports and the finding uh, categorization or, or or like you know validation of those findings, and not all the other features. In the past, I have done uh, a video on the other features covering the OWASP. So make sure you uh, do check that out if you need some introductory uh, video to this app. But without further ado, let's deep dive into it and and be sure to hit the thumbs up button and, and subscribe to the channel and follow Cybersecure TV on the Facebook. So here's the quick start guide, and here uh, we can see there is an automated scanning, uh, which says like run an automated scan against your application, which we will we'll do. Then we have the manual explorer, and then if you need, if you are new to this app, you can click here to learn more about the features. Now, if you click on the automated scans uh, here, the screen will allow you to launch an automated scan against the application. So here we just need to enter the URL. Uh, then, uh, of course, use the traditional spider or not. Uh, here you can uh, say like you know which browser or uh, Ajax Spider you want to use, uh, and here you can start the attack. But before we do that, let's uh, check out the policy that the scanner is going to use, right? So here you can uh, get to the active scan. If it's not visible, then uh, click on this plus sign, and, and here you'll find the active scanning. So for example, if I hide this and go here, this is how you can bring this up. Now here, uh, what you can do, uh, if you click this tiny button, it should open up the policy. Uh, you can also open up the policy from the policy manager. And this is the default policy. I haven't added any policy here. Uh, but let's say if we, if we want to modify one, so you go to the client browser, and here it will say, like, you know, what are the tasks that are covered under this policy? So here it has, like, a DOM access. Info gathering, uh, it says HD access, directory browsing, etc. Uh, you can also set the threshold, you can change it, uh, you can modify strength, like how uh, extensively you want the scanner to uh, scan the application. And then you can also see the quality. So release means it, it has gone through alpha, beta testing, and then finally it has been released. You'll we see some uh, test cases which alpha. Okay, yeah, there you go. So here you can see SOAP XML injection is in still in alpha stage. So you might get a false positive uh, from this test case. Uh, but again, uh, anyway, uh, it's still worth to give it a shot. So for example, let's say if you want to add a new policy, you can add the policy. You can select the test cases or uh, you can also select the policy you want to add here, and based on that, you can, uh, uh, like, you know, focus uh, uh, mostly, like, you know, I would be more concerned about the injection attacks for any application because that's a critical thing. And info gathering and PCI, you can, uh, you can still get that from the passive scanning or by analyzing the response. So, uh, depending on your need, you can go and, like, you know, select these test cases. Now let's do uh, like you know I have a uh, this mutual day application running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan this application uh, using I'm just gonna put the URL here uh, and let's use the Firefox uh, headless and then 
hit the attack. Oh, I think it. Okay. And now hit the attack. Now it's first off spiring the application, and once spiring is completed, it's gonna start the scanning portion of it. So we might have to wait for a few minutes before uh, we can get the results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the scan. Uh, actually, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna resume it once the scanned result is available and we can actually see the findings and we can analyze those. All right, so now uh, we can see uh, we have some scanned results. So here you can see on the alerts. So if you go to the spider, it's gonna show you all the spider page. Uh, when you go to the active scan, I actually stop the scan at the 47% because uh, our goal is to kind of analyze the alerts and I'm, I'm, I want to show you the findings instead of like and let the scan run for a while. It might take like you know longer uh, to complete it, so I just <coughs> had to stop the scan uh, in the uh, in, while it was running. So here, uh, so here you can see uh, where my mouse is. Uh, there are a bunch of like you know alerts here. Red flag that means high findings. High, orange means medium. Yellow is low, and blue is informational. So if you see the red one, it says cross site scripting, right? Reflected cross site scripting. Uh, you can actually see the request payload and response here. Uh, of course, you can also go here. Let me just expand this window a little bit so we can see it. So here, if we expand this, uh, we're gonna see like you know all the scanned and also along with the pages which are affected with the findings. So as you can see, yellow we have something here with the yellow. Uh, like a low severity uh, same way here we have found something which is a uh, medium severity so this is pretty much like you know uh, spider of the application but our goal is to uh, figure out whether this finding is uh, exist or not so for the reflected cross site scripting here you can uh, see the description and then uh, other information uh, once we scroll down solution reference right some standard information that you would see in any application the critical piece you need to analyze is the URL, where it's affected, what the risk rating is by the ZAP. Confidence is medium. That means it's not highly confident that this vulnerability exists, but it's uh, like, you know, on the scale of low, medium, and high, it's medium. Which parameter is affected, which is username, and this was the attack, and this is the evidence that it recorded in the response, which you can see here. And if we see the request here, uh, like, you know, this is encoded request, but if you decode it, you'll see the script alert one script. And CWID and uh, other references, right? So this is straightforward. Now, how do we, uh, uh, like, there's a, this is something, a really good way you can uh, find out whether the uh, vulnerability exists or not, right? So here you can open up in any of the browser, and once you do that, uh, it's going to actually open the request and also process the response in the browser and, and we can verify, uh, like for cross-site scripting, it's straightforward. If we see the alert box, that means the vulnerability does exist. But if we, uh, like, you know, for other SQL injection, we might have to see the information such that. But this is straightforward. Like, you open in the browser and if you see, uh, as you can see here, the alert box, that means the the finding was true and then we can definitely report this to the uh, developer. So this is the easiest way, uh, like, you know, for some of the findings to validate uh, using the ZAP. Other vulnerabilities, you may have to uh, read through the highlighted parts. So let's take one example. So here it says XFM options not set. So if we see in the response, there is no XFM options, and that's why uh, it's straightforward to analyze. Let's see. Cookie without HTTP only. So here uh, it says like you know set cookie show hints too. This cookie is not uh, the session token, so I would ignore that. Of course, I would flag this one uh, because the PHP session ID and there is no secure or HTTP only. So with the X having the cross site scripting and not having HTTP only, it's easier for attacker to uh, grab the cookie content, right? Here it says private IP disclosure, uh, access protection not enabled. Uh, that's fine too. I think, I hope this is about the XSS protection header, but that header is going to be deprecated, so I don't recommend this header anymore because it's going to be deprecated, I think, June next year or probably earlier than that. So this is not counted as findings. So if you if you complete the scan, uh, you'd, find, you'd see much more findings, then you can also export the reports. 
you can also uh, like you know modify uh, before exporting you can also export the spider report from here so there are a bunch of uh, uh, like you know stuff you can do here uh, make sure you do run the scan you do complete the scan and and you analyze the findings by yourself and and figure out how does that work and if you have any questions feel free to uh, drop it down in the comment section and hopefully everyone should be able to learn from that uh, let me know what else would you like me to cover in the OASAP. Uh, this is just the beginners, and probably I'll, I'll probably cover like in a more advanced topic. But I know people are more interested in BuffSuite than the ZAP. But let me know if that's the otherwise. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Also, uh, follow me on the Facebook so you can have the regular updates. Thank you so much.